In a world that is bland, colorless and cold, where banality grows like a fungus or a mold, there live the boring sheeple who look just like each other. A darker force rides into town unleashing demon brothers. Here come the little deviants, they come from underground. They're rising from the depths to take those sheeple down. The sheeple are compliant and make for fine ingredients. For customizing anything, here come the little deviants. Okay, so good morning, folks. I am just getting over all kinds of serious equipment problems that are hasn't been functioning let's just let's just keep going i played that commercial to start for a reason that commercial is exactly what's going on um there is a mixed race they are hunting god's angels that are trapped in human flesh and they are wearing the same outfits as we are let me which is called flesh let me show you something right here i want to show you this scene right here and i'll turn off the volume so here we go you know what i want to see what they're saying real quick okay i want to pay attention to right here this demon by the way he's got an x on his face which is female chromosome jumps up jumps out scares scares the sheep the sheeple out of his skin and then he puts on his skin a suit of flesh okay so he just puts on a suit of sheep flesh okay now we're gonna do the Bible and I am I'm giving you just kind of the tail end of some scriptures from the last three videos these are new revealed over the last 48 hours get ready to freak out and you're going to need this because the next part of these videos is going to be the data. It's going to be all supernatural data just stacked. But the last three videos combined with this video should give you the foundational understanding of the truth that we're a bunch of angels that are caught in host bodies. We've been trapped. You know, the Bible says, arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead. The Bible says also, it is high time to awake from your sleep because we've been put in a deep sleep in a into a host body system. So here we go. Now this guy puts on the sheep skin and then he leads the others to the slaughter. Watch. Compliant and make for fine ingredients. For customizing anything, here come the little deviants. So there he goes. He leads them all to the slaughter. This guy runs out. He looks in at his own reflection. And that XD is an emoticon. It means to laugh really hard. That's, you know, slit eyes and an open mouth when you rotate it. But the X is the female chromosome. Boom, there it goes. Rips his head off. His own reflection is what killed him because we're not supposed to have a reflection. If you have a reflection, you become an idol. Now, here we go. Let's just go. Let's do the scriptures. And let's do the imagery. Now, I want to show you something. Uh, this is just the most fascinating thing in the world to me. Okay. This, the, the, the Vatican. This, I've shown you this. This is the face of the dragon. This is in the Sistine Chapel. This is all the face of a dragon. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the nose. There's the open mouth. There's the chin. So here's the eye of the dragon, the eye of the dragon. You can just squint your eyes a little bit and you'll be able to see it really well. So here is the face of the dragon. Well, on this image right here, here's Lucifer coming through the arch with the virgin. Okay, now let me show you something just phenomenal. I'm going to enlarge this. And then, so here he comes with his group 
that are with him. Now, look at the positions of his arms. Do you think that's a normal arm position? That's one going up and the other one going down. Same position, one up, one down. Now, look at this guy right here. Look what he's holding right here. That is a suit of flesh, people, right there. Okay, now watch. This becomes so... This is going to become so significant in the scriptures now, you almost won't believe what you're going to see. So now I'm going to take this guy, I've isolated him, and I'm just merely going to drag him right up here so you can see. There he is, right there. So I've isolated him, and now I'm going to enlarge him so you can see him. There he is. So what the heck is this guy doing holding a suit of flesh? How bizarre. Let's look at let's look at this guy right here. What is he? He's identical to this guy, isn't he? This guy's got a suit of flesh and he's going to put it on. So there's no difference between this and this. And this is a scion commercial. Okay, that is a scion commercial for selling a Toyota car. And if you look right here, I'll go right here below. I'll take the guy's suit of flesh. And here is the little deviant putting on the suit of sheeple skin. There it is. What is the difference? There is no difference. It is the same exact agenda. Now, let's look at the Bible. Okay, let me see where we're at. Okay, we're going to start in Isaiah. Okay, so we're going to start in Isaiah 14, where Lucifer has been cast down. Thy pomp has brought thee down to the grave, and the noise of thy veals, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt, look at this, my throne. Okay, I'm going to enlarge that for you. I will exalt my throne, pay attention, above the stars of God. Okay, we're going to start there this morning. We're going to Esort. Here we go. We will go to Isaiah chapter 14 there's a lot to unpack here but i'm gonna do do the most important stuff today and then we'll get to the next in part five okay so here we go look what he says for thou hast said in my heart i will ascend it means to ascend to rise okay to mount up i will ascend into heaven it's always good to look at the words because you're going to see these again Shamaim, Shama. Okay, I like to look at the numbers, 8064. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt to raise, to rise or raise my throne. Okay, I told you. This is the part to pay attention. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Let's look at the word throne. Okay, it means covered. That is thrown. Very important words right here. As canopied, seat, stool, throne. Okay, before I move on to the root of the word, I want to show you something, let's see, that you will see is canopied. In the Vatican, this is a canopied altar. Underneath this, if you look up, there is a dove representing the spirit. So in the, these columns right here are twisted like that because they're DNA. So here are these DNA, and I've done, I've done videos in the past on these columns. They're DNA. That's why they're twisted like this. And here is this big canopy right over the main table that's in the altar. And underneath there is a dove representing the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is a canopy. Let me show you something now. Okay, so the word throne, I'm going to click on it, 3678. 
right there. I will exalt my throne. Properly covered that is thrown as canopied, seat stool throne. And the root of the word means for clothing or secrecy. To clad self. So that means to dress yourself in. To clothe. To conceal self. To cover self. You see these words in front of the, the parentheses self? So you read it like this. This is how you read this. To close self. To clothe self. To conceal self. To cover self. To flee to. Hide. And then we're going to look at the root of that. So, so his throne is to cover oneself for clothing or secrecy, which is your host body. Now get ready to freak out. Here we go. To be covered with flesh. Told you so. <laughs> Told you so. Why do you think someone would paint, you know, and by the way, Michelangelo was just uh, an extension of Lucifer painting the Sistine Chapel. And all the stuff that was done up there was being directed by a spirit using Michelangelo as a host body to do it. He literally painted the agenda for Lucifer in the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel is built as an example. I mean, it literally manifests the truth of the Bible right there in front of you. So let's go back and let's look at this. So the word, I will exalt my throne, look. To be covered with flesh. Why do you think they're trying to get this transhuman thing going? They're trying to get an eternal host body. And they're trying to do away with. They don't need man anymore. They're trying to meld man with machine. The iron mixed with miry clay. And they're trying to get it done. And make it happen so he's got an eternal host body. That's it. And so now watch. Okay, so let's go back to here. So here it's here's the Sistine Chapel. We know the dragon was kicked out of heaven. Here's a big dragon. You got one eye of the dragon that I've shown you is a, a moat, which means a twig that's withering. And the other eye is a beam right here that they're erecting on top of the line of the tribe of Judah. I've shown it to you. So they're killing one consciousness which was the Lord God's consciousness trapped in the dragon system. And they're erecting the beam in the other eye, which is the dragon system. You see, which is the flesh. That's why it manifests in commercials like Scion commercials. And that's why after this video today, I'm going to overwhelm you with so much data that I told you you're probably going to have an anxiety attack or two. Because now the uh, the flow of supernatural data is going to back up everything you've seen here in the scriptures. That's how you know you've arrived. Because everything equals the same thing every time. Everything I've told you now is proven out again and again and again and again. Some people say, why are you repetitive? Go look at the attributes of the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Just go look. I'll show you in a later video. One of his attributes is repetitiveness. That's why. Because y'all have been so, you know, let me take a moment. Y'all have been so indoctrinated. All the people that have gone to churches. I didn't, I didn't have that problem. I didn't have pre-indoctrination. I knew Catholicism was a farce. I was like, this is a joke, man. You know, when I would go to, you know, when I was a little kid, I, I used to do what my mom told me and, get on my knees and light candles in front of the statues of the Virgin. And I thought that's what we're supposed to do. But as I got older, I was like, this is like a joke. You go in on Sunday, you tell some guy in a box everything you did wrong, and then what? You go do it all over again? He just tells you, say, Hail Mary, ten times, say Our Father ten times, and you're good to do it again? That's insane. That's insanity. It's like, why not just do what you're doing? I knew that saying a bunch of words meant nothing. Anyway, so now it's all making a whole lot of sense. 
because we're the sheep that are being destroyed that are part of their system that's why the largest altar in the world is that big dead sheep we're going to go up here and just one more time take a look at that sheep let me pause it there we go so there look at look at that sheep i mean just look at what you're looking at you're looking at the big canopy to cloud self, cover self. They're in there singing to Lucifer, dawning his own creation. They did create the male and female. And you're looking at a penis and a vagina and a dead sheep and the light coming through the window, which is the represents the vagina because that's them birthing into this world. So they have a hiding place. So they have a suit of flesh. They can cover themselves. Uh-huh. So now let's go back and look at the scriptures again. So we're doing Isaiah 14. We'll go back there and we'll again. Now, ready? You said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt to rise or raise my throne as covered. That is a throne, canopy, seat stool throne. Okay, ready? By implication to cover for clothing or secrecy. Think of the Scion commercial. Think of the, the, the wall that's painted as a dragon with a guy holding human skin. To clad self. To close self. To clothe self. To conceal self. To cover self. To flee to hide. And it comes from this root. To be covered with flesh do you remember what i showed you in the other videos let us create man in our vain show representative figure especially an idol if anyone thinks that's the lord god creating man in his image then you think the image of the lord god is a representative figure especially an idol so let's go to exodus where we're told not to make those things because didn't the lord god say uh do not make any graven image right exodus 20 so let's go to exodus 20 you ready i'm the lord thy god which brought thee out of brought thee out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt not make unto thyself look any graven image what does it say an idol okay you shall not make any graven image it means an idol well hold on to your horses folks or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven. There's that Shamaim, Shama. Above or in the earth beneath. You should learn this word. Eretz. It means to be firm the earth. Uh, and I don't <laughs> you can go off on a tangent right there, but I'm not going to. Or that is in the water under the earth. Uh-oh. There's that word semen again. But let's do this. Isn't there semen on that altar? Thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image, no idols. It means a carved idol. Or look at this, any likeness. Let's have a let's have a look at that. Something portioned. That is fashioned out as a shape. That is indefinitely phantom. Oh my gosh, that's Genesis 1:26. Let us make men in our image vain show phantom image look at this specifically embodiment oh no he's talking about things all these angels have already done i did a long study on this prayerfully and we'll do a study on the ten commandments it is bigger than everyone thought it's what everybody's already guilty of and it's it just plays out here on earth okay so you shall not make any graven image like that dead sheep with a penis and sperm and a vagina and a bunch of angels being burnt into the flesh so you shall not make any graven image or any likeness it means specifically embodiment wow that's a kind of a big one to portion out a species oh my goodness you shall not make any embodiment species really uh-huh because you're not supposed to take on host bodies to hide in 
so you can do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Wrong. And everyone's caught. Okay, so anyway, so, and then it says, For those out, for thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I will visit the iniquity of the fathers. Look at this, the iniquity. Moral evil, perversity, sin. Moral evil, perversity, you know, call someone a pervert. What are they, you know, they got a sexual issue. There you go. So anyway, it even re reflects in the Ten Commandments. Let's go back to Isaiah, Isaiah 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and you will choose Israel, and you will set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them. A foreigner, alien, sojourner shall be joined to twine together like DNA, to unite together, to cleave, to join self with them, and they shall cleave, abiding, gathered together to the house of Jacob. So, door plus dungeon. So, you see, your host bodies, just like the little Scion commercial, I showed you, or the wall at the Sistine Chapel. Your body, the host body system is a duplicitous good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, good and evil. And it's trapped in a system called the flesh. The flesh, I've shown you, is inherently evil. Remember the Statue of Liberty standing on top of the kelepot, which represents the shell, which is your body, your shell. And she's holding a penis with the flame, which is the imprisoned lightning. Jesus said, I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And the word fire is lightning. So now everything's proving out perfect. I mean, who could come up with so many perfect data points? Not me, but the Bible can. And a, a gift that proves it's true. So I'm just, I'm just sharing what he showed me. That's it. So here we go. Let's go back. So you're going to be tied together with them. And then God's going to decide who gets to come home. How art thou fallen? The word is nafal. I know I've started learning a little Hebrew doing this. The word is nafal. Let's go back to Psalm 82 real quick. Psalm 82. And we're just going to keep proving it out. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course i have said you are god's elohim gods of the supreme god and all of you are children of look at this the most high pay attention the supreme god look elion right there but but that's a huge uh hang on a sec just a minute but you shall die like men the word is hebrew word 120 Adam, and you shall fall, not fall, same word. You shall fall like one of the princes from heaven. There you go. So let's go back and let's just keep going back and forth. And then we're going to move to Isaiah 28. Okay, so back to Isaiah 14. How hast thou fallen, not fall, same word. How Lucifer, son of the morning, he said, I will exalt my throne as covered. That is a throne as canopied, which is exactly what's in the Catholic Church. A big canopy covering the altar, seat, stool, throne. And what does it really mean? It means by implication to cover for clothing or secrecy, to clad self, to close self, to close self, to close self, to conceal self, to cover self, to flee, to hide. Okay, and the root of all that is be covered with flesh. Oh my gosh, are you joking me to be covered with flesh? Because I can show you a picture right now that's painted on the wall of the Sistine Chapel where a guy is sitting there holding a suit of flesh so he can cover himself with flesh. I saw something very odd. I noticed right here for Michelangelo being such a good artist, he forgot this guy's penis. I'm like, that's kind of weird. 
Well, is it because he needs a suit of flesh to do that? But let's have a look at that. I mean, that is very, I mean, for an artist, you know what? What is this supposed to be? Some piece of cloth draped over? Or is this looks more like nothing happening right here? Let's view it in full size. Let's just really, what the heck? No, there's nothing going on right there. See, there's no penis. This is not good art. I mean, if you were an artist and you wanted to cover up this guy's genitalia, you wouldn't have this happening like this. This represents, uh, yeah, there's just a vacuous hole. And he probably, oh, look, this one's got a penis right here. So this guy's going to need to slip into this to get this whole thing going. You understand? I mean, that, everything is perfectly painted, perfectly built right in front of our faces. And guys, I can show you, at this point, I can show you commercial after commercial after commercial after commercial. You know, and it's all over the TV now. It's just everywhere. It's just a joke. So anyway, so there you go. He needs a penis, so he's going to slip this on. He's going to take on a host body as a hiding place. That way, they can use the water's semen to get things going. All right, now let's go back. We're going to go back to Isaiah. Now we're going to go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Okay, this is an amazing chapter. Judgment on Ephraim and Jerusalem. Okay. Here we go. A cornerstone in Zion. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men that rule this people, which is in Jerusalem. See, we are ruled by scornful men. They mock us all day long. Because you said we have made a covenant a, in the sense of cutting. Look, a compact because made by passing between pieces of flesh. That's the two-party system right there. We have made a covenant with death, the dead or the place of the dead. So they're in agreement with it, folks. They're using it as a source of food. And we have made, and with hell we are in agreement. We have made lies our refuge. It says they have made lies their refuge. Look, lies falsehood literally untruth oh figuratively an idol okay wait a minute we have made lies our refuge what lies what's an idol what idol the human host body is what they're talking about we have made lies look falsehood literally untruth figuratively idol let's go back to genesis one, here we go, Genesis 1, and Elohim, a bunch of God's angels and magistrates said, let us make man in our image, what does it say, especially an idol, there it is, man is an idol, I told you, now the scriptures have proven it out, uh, let us make man in our vain show, right here, Vain show, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. So there's no way to argue with the scriptures. Your body, your host body, is an idol made by Lucifer. And the combination that God allowed to happen in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve created a mixture so the Lord God's still in control of all of it. So Lucifer may think he's in control, but the Lord God's in control of even the duplicitous system because they've been combined now. Do you think Cain married? Uh, I mean, who did Cain marry? Just, you know, a lot of people can't wrap their brain around this. The earth was already populated with the serpent race, humans. Uh, when I say humans, man, right there. Let us create man in our image. So they did create them male and female. And he said, go forth and multiply. And then he barocked them, blessed them. So they went forth, they populated the earth. And then the Garden of Eden was a separate issue. And that's the fall where it's like, okay, you guys wanted it. You got it. So there's your mixed race. So you think Cain, when he was, you know, go 
go wander the earth. Uh, when the Lord said, anyone that touches Cain's in trouble with me, that's me paraphrasing. No one's going to harm Cain. Uh, anyone that does, I'll deal with them. That's what the Lord said. So he sent him out. What do you think? Cain went and married. Uh, who'd Cain marry? Where, where do you go? Well, we all know that there is already civilization there. There are already a, a civilization of peoples. So Cain... <coughs> pardon me, left. And there's there's your mixed race. Now, here we go. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 28. There we go again. Because you have said we have made a covenant by passing between two pieces of flesh. Uh... Uh, covenant with death and with hell, we are in agreement. We have made lies, figuratively an idol, our refuge. A shelter, hope. You know, like Barack Obama, his poster, change and hope. A shelter, their hope's coming to an end. That's why they're freaking out. To flee for protection. We have made an idol. To flee for protection. And under falsehood. We have hidden ourselves. By implication a sham. Okay so there you go. To cheat that is be untrue. Deal falsely. Okay now. We have. Isaiah 28, there we go. I want to make sure I give these to you guys. I have a lot to do today. And Now, Exodus 20, one more time. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness, species, like a host body. Thou shalt not make any graven image, oh, like a giant altar of a dead sheep that's a penis, a vagina, and a bunch of angels, and a bunch of angels turning to semen. Why is it all in the Bible? Why is all the imagery I show you? How come I can find it all in the Bible? I'll tell you why. Because it's all true. That's why. It's starting to make all kinds of sense now, isn't it? Now the Bible makes total sense. A lot of people think, oh, how could God be so cruel and do uh, Time out. Everyone's a prisoner. Everybody's a prisoner. This is your prison suit. Why do you think death's no longer burdensome for me? I've overcome death through the blood of the Lamb. Because you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So if my host body's my prison suit, why wouldn't I want to want to get rid of my prison suit and go back home? I mean, doesn't that make finally all the sense? You know, everybody's like, oh, I don't want to die. Everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. That's because you've been held captive to fear of death. And the reason you've been held captive to fear of death is because you're afraid. Why are you afraid? Because of judgment. Why? Because you haven't come clean yet. And you haven't been washed of your sins. Once you come clean and you say, I deserve it. I'm guilty as charged. You would be just in condemning me forgive me and you raise the white flag and you give up quit running from god quit trying to hide from god he knows everything just tell him what you did confess it whoever you hurt tell him i lied to you it's i know i remember when i had to come clean man after i got saved i came clean in front of the lord god in my living room and i told him i deserve to go to hell i've done things i can't fix and i don't even know which Jesus to turn to. I just wish I knew the truth. And then the Lord revealed himself to me. I got saved that night when I was at the St. Anthony. I went down. I opened a door in the back of a hotel, which meant imminent death. If I opened that door, I was going to die just to know the truth. And I was willing to. And then I went out and I got saved. I prayed, Our Father, water and light came down to me. And then I was told, Now you say, Hail Mary. And the reason I did, and people that misconstrue this, shame on you. I said this repetitively. It's not right to pray to the Virgin. But in order for me to reverse engineer death for this generation, 
I had to know where death came from. That's why after I said, Our Father, water and light came down on me. I was saved. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was beaming with light. And then Michael, an angel, looked at me and said, You say, Hail Mary. And I did it. I did what he said. And as I said the words, all that light, I could feel a, a quantitative amount leaving my body. And I was like, where is it going? And I felt death. I was like, what is going on? That way I knew where death came from, the virgin. Has that proven out to be true now? Yes, it has. Why do they pray to the virgin? Because when you turn it upside down, it's a dead sheep. It's the same thing as the largest altar in the world. I've walked into a Starbucks and said, that guy right over there is going to draw a picture of me and put a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out. And I was right. Chris, the manager, was like, er, what are you on, dude? I said, I'll bet you a million bucks. Week and a half later, hey, John, I drew a picture of you. And he put an image of a dead sheep on the picture he drew of me. I was right. How could any human being know that? Because I was predestined to reverse engineer death for you guys. To show you what death is. Death is a separation from the Lord God. Now, y'all ready? Y'all ready to see some words that are going to blow your mind? Let's do it. Okay, so let's go back to Exodus 20. You ready? This is going to blow your mind. Then we're going to go back to Isaiah 14. Look at this. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, the self-existent Jehovah God, Elohim, the Lord thy God, am a jealous Look at this word, God. What number is that? That's a totally different word. It's mighty, the almighty. It's Hebrew word 410. L. You know, like El Elyon. I am a jealous God, L. Visiting the iniquity, the perversity, moral evil of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. To hate personally. Look at that. To hate personally. Enemy foe. So the word God right here is Hebrew word 410. Let's go to Isaiah now. Everybody ready to freak out? Isaiah 14. Let's do it again. You said, I will rise above the throne of the Most High. Let's see. How art thou fallen from heaven, a Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? who did us weak in the nations. You said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt to raise my throne as canopied to hide self, cover self, conceal self with flesh, to be covered with flesh. I will conceal myself with flesh and I will raise above, ready, the stars, the stars, as shining figuratively princes. I will arise above the princes of God. Oh, wow, there's that word 410. L, it's not Elohim, is it? No, it's not. I will rise above the stars of L, the Almighty God. Okay, there it is. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. El Yon, back to Psalm 82. I'm just going to prove this out. A lot of people have tried to challenge this. Try and challenge it now. Try and challenge it now. I told you, we, we are those gods that got cast out. I have said you are gods, gods of the supreme God. And all of you are children of El Yon. The Most High God. There it is. But you shall die like men because you created them and you shall fall. You shall be cast down. You shall fall. You shall be cast down. You shall be cast out. You will cease, die, and divide. Like one of the princes, master prince that had rule. Back to Isaiah 14. You said, I will exalt my throne as canopied like the altar in St. Peter's royal abode of the serpent. 
I will exalt my throne as covered with flesh above the stars, the princes of the Most High God. But you shall be brought down to hell. The world of the dead ready, including its accessories, and look at that, and inmates. Told you. Prisoners. Now, that we got those scriptures under your belt. <laughs> I sound pretty forceful, don't I? <laughs> no, it says, I see people that like to try and come up and they try and throw their silly little wrenches. And I'm like, guys, the Lord God gave me a spiritual gift to share with you that proves the Bible's true. Why wouldn't you want to prove the Bible's true? And it's because the ones that do it are the ones that are under condemnation. It's just like the Democrats trying to shoot down everything that's going on. They know they're guilty. The, I mean, the Democrat Party is the most guilty party of people I've ever seen in my life. It's scary. And I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm just saying simple observation of two groups. One group is trying to tell the truth. Get it out. The other group's a bunch of pathetic liars, and they're willing to do whatever they have to do. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm just observing. I'm like, wow, these guys are sick. Wow, these guys will lie through their teeth. These guys will do whatever it takes to maintain government power, government gubernamentis, mind control, Democrat, demos, demon, kratos, fishing basket. I mean, come on, guys. This is just like, we have an altar that's a dead sheep. It's a bunch of angels turn into semen. It's a penis and it's a vagina. Genesis 1 says, let us make man in our vain show. Representative figure, especially an idol. Exodus 20 says, thou shalt not make unto yourselves any graven image. And then it has, we have an altar of a big dead sheep that's a bunch of angels turning to semen, a penis, a vagina, and a dead sheep. And then it says, or any likeness, like a host body species. I mean, you got to be kidding, right? And if, if anyone can't see this, then you are what's called delusional. And the reason you're delusional is because if you're presented with facts, these are facts. I'm not showing you anything that's not a factual image or a factual definition. Everything you're looking at is a fact. So if you don't believe the facts that are presented to you, let me tell you the definition of delusional. Holding on to your own idiosyncratic belief system, even when presented with facts to prove to the contrary. Therefore, it is considered a mental illness. Are you watching the strong delusion on TV like I am? I'm like, oh my gosh, you can present these people with total facts and they still don't w refuse to believe it. You know why? Because they're guilty. They're under condemnation. They're never going to believe the truth because the truth will convict them and they want to conceal themselves because they know what what's inside them knows what's coming. That's what's up. It's a no-brainer. Anyway, and the Lord God gave me this super crazy cool gift that I get to share with everybody. And it just kicked my butt for years to get it to you guys. And now I'm going to just unleash it like a weapon against the enemy. Because I'm going to show you guys so much data here in the next couple of videos. I've been, I've been accumulating some more data. And I've been tweaking some images that... It's just not even arguable by anyone that's got a shred of rational mind left. So, I'm just being blunt. Do you know the, the Lord made me this way, right? Here, let me show you something. Hang on. Okay, one thing I really don't like to do, and as a matter of fact, I told the Lord I didn't want to do. And one thing I said, I told, there's very few times I told the Lord I wasn't going to do something. The first thing I told him I wasn't going to do was when he told me to do the Just a Messenger series. In 2008, I'm like, oh, no. Now I was in my living room talking, you know, to the Lord. But when I talk, I'm like, uh-uh, no, I'm not doing it. And, you know, you want me to do a video and you want me to come out, you want me to tell everybody that Barack Obama is the Antichrist? And, and the Pope's a false prophet, and even though he'd proven it to me, that was before anybody was saying all that stuff. He wasn't even elected president. He wasn't, 
He certainly hadn't gotten the Nobel Peace Prize, and the Lord had given me a prophetic utterance. And so he wanted me to put that prophetic utterance on YouTube, and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm in court. I'm fighting for the safety of my kids. I can't do it. No way. And he's and he told me to open the Bible. I and I was so I heard the Lord say, "Go open the Bible on your desk." And I opened up the Bible, and it was Ezekiel three. And as I started reading, I realized, "Oh my gosh, my body was just tingling." I get the witness of the Spirit in like an all body buzz. And so anyway, I started reading, and it said, "And if the watchman seeth the sword coming, and he warneth not the people, and they die in their sins, and they." They die in their iniquity. I will hold the watchman personally responsible. <laughs> I was like, ah! and, uh, and so I knew he was telling me, you either do it or, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're not kidding, are you? So if the watchman doesn't warn the people, I'm going to hold him responsible. And so, you know, what was on the scale was go to court, you know, and have these guys maybe use my videos and my testimony against me and I was or have the Lord God hold you personally responsible your blood for theirs that you didn't warn and I was like that's a no-brainer I'll do what the Lord says and if they want to rip me apart in court I'm okay whatever so I did what he said and then another thing I didn't want to do was put my personal testimony on YouTube and the Lord told me you have to and I'm like okay and I did it the other thing I didn't want to do was tell people my identity. I'm like, I don't want to do it. And he said, you have to. So let me show you something about this. And to the church of Philadelphia and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, let me show you an interesting word about angel. It means a messenger by implication, a pastor. Did y'all know that? Yeah. To bring tidings. There you go. A messenger especially an angel. We're all angels, by the way. No one has some, no one's like, oh, well, you're all angels. We're all angels. All of us. To the church of Philadelphia said, thus saith he that is holy, he that is true, he hath the key of David, he that openeth, let me show you the word openeth, to open, just he that openeth and no man shutteth. Just like the night I got saved, he opened a door for me. And I went out that door and I got saved. And then I had an open door to his communication. But let me show you one of the attributes of this alleged angel. Okay, you ready? Let me show you one of these attributes. It means properly up. Repetition, intensity, reversal. Oh, oh, repetition. Why are you so repetitive, Click? Uh, God made me that way. You're blocked for good. <laughs> I'm just so sick of it. Because I love you guys, but you know, when I see people go, why do you go over the same thing? I go over a lot of the same stuff, but you know what? I add stuff to it. And then I approach it with more scriptures that no one's seen. Anyone ever seen the scriptures that were delivered today? Uh, no, no one has. The Lord revealed it to me over the last two days. And I was like, oh yeah. So anyway, repetition, you know why? Because it takes a while to undo all the stuff that's been done to all your brains and in your heads. All you pre-indoctrinated or all the people that have never understood, the key to learning is repetition. And this is such a mind-blowing, insane, unbelievable data that it requires a little bit of repetition. Look at what, look at what the devil's doing on CNN, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, ESPN. The devil, the enemy won't shut up about saying Russian collusion, Russian... Did you know they accused Lindsey Graham now of being a Russian agent 
because he's trying to get Kavanaugh confirmed? Yeah. See, they repeat the same lie over and over and over. Russian collusion, Russian collusion, Russian collusion, Russian collusion, Donald Trump, Russia, Donald Trump, Russia. They just say it over and over until the lie becomes the truth. And I'm trying to help undo the lie that's in everybody's brain. You've been fed religion your whole lives. And I'm trying to be repetitive with the truth. And the good thing about mine is it comes with biblical support and a supernatural pictorial gift. Oh, look, it's a big dead sheep. Oh, my gosh. Uh, a guy that has been coming to the ministry for a while that used to come a lot, Siho, Siho Song. He went to the Vatican and he took a picture. He, he held up a piece of paper like this and he wrote, he wrote, he wrote, thank you, Jonathan. And then he had his wife take the picture, I guess, and had the big sheep behind him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, exactly, man. I mean, you know, I mean, guys, the largest altar in the world is a penis, vagina, dead sheep, and a bunch of angels turning to semen inside of a snake. Now, if that's not the biggest news on the planet, I don't know what is. But you know what? I can show you tons of this stuff. And now the mystery solved, just like the mother of exiles, the Statue of Liberty. What do you think the Statue of Liberty was? Oh, it's the Statue of Liberty. Oh, welcome all you people to the U.S. Wrong. It represents Eve standing on top of the host body system. The fall. She's got a penis in her hand with the imprisoned lightning, which is you. You're that little spark of lightning that's in prison. She's holding a penis. Inside of the statue is DNA, a spiral staircase all the way down. Why didn't they just make a staircase that went like this? Zigzagged, huh? No, they made a spiral staircase. DNA all the way down. She's standing on point of, on top of an 11-pointed star called the Hindecagram, which is a kelepot in Jewish Kabbalah. I mean, you know, woe unto you Pharisees, you hide the key to knowledge. You don't enter the kingdom yourself, and you stop others from entering. Your damnation shall be the worst. So you see how I can just ramble now. It just all flows because it all fits. That's why I can literally sit here and ramble for 10 hours on data if I wanted to. Now, yeah. that was good, huh? <laughs> okay, so yeah. Yeah, so one way to open the door to help people look, to open, to open up literally or figuratively in various applications, one way to open that door is repetition, intensity, and reversal oh you mean like turning the virgin upside down it's a dead sheep so when y'all you know when people leave that comment oh why do you regurgitate the same thing i'm like obviously you don't know what's going on and i just block you for good because if that's your answer then you don't understand how profound this is the key of all of it of everything not just a little, the unrolled scroll. So someone's like, why are you repetitive? I'm like, ah, <laughs> that's so annoying. Thanks for letting me vent. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Okay, I'm going to load this thing up. Remember your scriptures. And now we get into the just, yes. Now I get to go through so many folders so much data, the flood of data is going to be like Niagara Falls. Just, it's just going to be like, ah. All right. I love you guys. I want to say thank you. Just, I, I just want a, a personal thank you to everybody. Uh, thanks for just, you know, the help, the support, you know, the encouragement, the encouraging comments. Yay. Good for, thank you. I mean, I've taken a beating for 16 years. I think that's one reason the Lord had me do this. Because, you know, I'm like the Energizer Bunny. I can take a lick. Oh, that's Timex. Take a lick and then keep on ticking. Anyway, so I got I just keep marching forward. We are at the time. I can't tell you what's going on right this second. I want to really bad. But I have the craziest, most exciting 
testimony. <laughs> it's so unbelievable. It's this is like Old Testament stuff, guys. Anyway, so peace and grace. Thank you. And there's your scriptures. You know, there's there's the truth. So one way to open that door. See, when you have the key, it's the same word. It's Kleis. That's the exact same word. Look, he that hath the key of David. Who has the key of David? To the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Saith these things, he that is holy, he that is true, truthful, truthful, true as not concealing. Just like everything I show you, I unconceal it. He that hath the key, the kleis, as a key as shutting a lock. Let's go back to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. And who do people say that I am? Everybody got it wrong. And then Simon said, I say you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Petros, Piece of rock, G4074. See, it's a little piece because he would be the the first upside down building stone that, that you are Petros. And upon this Petra, Jesus, mass of rock, I will build my church, those that are called out, a calling out. And I will give unto thee the Keys, there's that word. See the word keys? What is it? Kleis. It's the same word as shutting a lot. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That's why it's Matthew 1, 6. Put the key in, turn it upside down, and it becomes a 1, 9. Even the number of the verse reveals the key. Wow. That's all the Lord, guys. Now, I've got the key. The Lord gave me the key, and he made me suffer to get the key. And even on this shirt, look, they put the key right on this. There's right side up, upside down. And see, they're mocking everybody in their clothing. I mean, all you got to do is look. Look at, the, look at this. Right side up, upside down. It's on everything. So if you think you can get away with it, you know, like, oh, why do you wear those clothes? Because I use them to expose them. Who cares? You know, it's like some people, oh, my God, he's a demon. He's wearing a... It's like, shut up. <laughs> so annoying. Anyway, uh, some people really fit into that Monty Python witch, you know, the, the witch <laughs> scene. It's like, okay. Let's see, anything else? Let me check my desktop. Oh, yeah, we got so much good stuff here. There is so much stuff. It's just so many folders of busted. It's unbelievable. I mean, this is just unbelievable. All right, well, there it is. There's their canopy. They'll cover myself, hide oneself, conceal oneself with flesh. There's a penis. There's a vagina. There's a bunch of angels turning to semen. There's the sheep, the host body system. There's the DNA. There's the canopy. And there they are singing to Lucifer. Bam! What's not to love about the Lord? He reveals deep and hidden mysteries, doesn't he? All right, guys. Love you guys. I got to go, man. I've got a testimony to deal with. All right.